Good afternoon from Little Creek Bee Ranch. We have another lesson that we want to post about swarm pots. But before we do that, I want you to I want you to think about what you're going to need as a beekeeper. See all that stuff? Just lots and lots and lots, lots and lots of bee stuff. So when you get a building or a shed or something, get something much bigger than you think you're going to need. Like when you're Spouse complains to you, Harold, you don't need something that big. Then you know you got something the right size, okay? So just a point of note, get something bigger than you think you're going to need because we, we need something bigger. Anyway, okay, swarm pots. Look at this. You know, we're going to hang these. We, met, we bought 10 of these and we posted a video about this not long ago. And what we've done is just to, to take a cord and we're going to hang them vertically. And they have a wire on the side that you can tie to the tree, whatever. And we just tied knots in the bottom of, on, on the bottom of the eyelets of the cords, like that. And uh, what we do, we took nails and we just kind of drilled a hole in the side. It's pretty tough stuff, it's pretty thick. Just shoved a nail on the side. Should be okay, not a problem. Okay, so, so those are gonna hang up. Not anytime soon. We're going to wait till the latter part of March. Now, AccuWeather.com says March is supposed to be really warm. So, I don't know. Maybe earlier. We'll see. I feel good about these. I think the bees like the darkness and the texture. I think we ought to see some swarm catches. Kind of like setting out a jug line for catfish or a trot line for catfish. We're going to set out 10 of these as part of our sustainable beekeeping system. And uh, various places, high, low, whatever, we're going to mix it up. See what the bees like. I don't think height... Everybody says 8 to 10 feet. I don't know about that. I see bees hit stuff low, water meters even. So I think darkness and texture is more critical than height, in my opinion. But I want to ask you, what do you do after you get the bees? Okay, I've had several people ask me this. Okay, well, what do you do? Well, here's one way. Now, <clears throat> you have at the bottom here two empty boxes. The bottom one is a brood box, and the one on top of it is a medium or an Illinois. <clears throat> Excuse me. So if I had bees, based upon the principle they don't like to be shaken, I don't, I don't believe we ought to shake bees. I think they want to get up and go if you're going to shake them. Um, have a couple of extra boxes, and then once you disassemble, like this is the top. Okay, now let me pull this out. It's the top. Let's just say you disassemble it, you smoked them just a touch, just a smidge, you open them up, and you set them, you set them down inside the box upside down just like you see right there now now what's going to happen here okay let me let me do it this way when you open these pots up the lid see that's the inside of the lid here's the outside rough looks like a log or something and the inside has these ribs now these ribs are real important because the girls the workers will build a double of wax off those ribs but when I separate, if I turn it over this way, when I separate the, the lid, provided you're three or four days after you see them housed up, you know, give them three or four or five days. But if you come back in three weeks, they may have the whole thing full of wax, and then that changes our program. But there ought to be, oh, I'd say probably three inches of wax, something like that. Not a big deal, but here's the cool part. The mass of the bees will be in the pot. They had, they'll be along the side walls. And they haven't had a chance to build a whole lot. So when you separate the lid off the pot, the natural part of this is the comb is already built here. And guess who's inside of the comb? That's where Her Royal Highness would be holed up. And you, if you're, you know, you got to think your way through this. You separate that lid from the barrel, and I would take, I would, I would spritz these bees when I put that pot in there. I'd spritz them heavy with sugar water, and I'd have a table, and I'd take my lid over here to the side, on a table, wherever you know, outside, something. Somebody hold it if you have help, and then I would take my fancy dancy queen clipper. And I would part that, wow, see it spritz the bees real good, really good, wet them down. 
and I would peel that comb back, and every time I peel the comb back, I'd spritz it real good. Peel that comb back and spritz it. I'm looking for the queen. And when I find her, I can just hand clip her. Or if you can get your bare, bare hands, not a problem. That bees don't work like you think they do. And you can you can just pinch her and put her in a mesh tube or a queen cage. She's got handles, you know, her wings are handles. And when you just gently pinch her wings, her abdomen will roll down. She's not trying to sting. She's trying to get her balance. And her legs will wiggle. She's just trying to get her balance. And you can put her in something. Well, when you have a, when you have a queen cage, if you will grip it and turn it like the holes right here, if you'll turn it upside down and make it dark and then point her head towards the hole, you can even thump her butt with your finger and she'll go straight up into the dark and boop, she's in the cage. That's how they get them in the cage. They hold them dark, make them dark. There's the hole. She'd even go into my hand and upside down, hold down and boop, she'll go right in. Now I got the queen in the cage. Once I have the queen, I've got control of the whole colony. My, my point is I get excited that when you understand how these swarm pots work, the worker bees will be packed on the sides. They're, they're not all going to be packed in a mass here. They want to breathe. And the queen wants air on her wax. I just want to give them three or four days to build a double of comb so it's pretty easy for me to get in there. And likely, highly likely, she'll be on that comb right in there. Well, I just separated the mass of bees from her by pulling off the lid and turning it over and, and anticipating the fact that that's where she's going to be. Now, how, how cool is that? I think that's pretty slick. I mean, I didn't develop it. It's just the way the bees work. Because you've got to understand how the bees work. They'll be packed down inside there. Now, I don't have to shake them off. They'll be packed in there. I just separated the queen. And there she is here. And I can either clip her. Oh. And she's in the clippy, or I can pinch her and pick her up, put her in a queen cage, whoop, upside down. Now there she is. Once I get it plugged up, or she's in the queen clip, now what? Well, let's set the clip aside. Okay, let's just say she's in there. And now we're going to take our lid. Now, now watch this. <laughs> this. Now see, nobody tells you this stuff. This is why I film. Look at this lid. We got fits. Look at that. Perfect. That fits perfect in there. Get all the wires tucked down there. Ooh, there'll be bees on it. Or you can shake off the lid, whatever. It fits. Now there's the mass of bees. You've got the queen in the clippy. Here comes a whole frame, a whole box, a brood box. Nothing's going to be put on top of that pot except this box. It's going to have some drawn comb or some foundation. And what you're going to do is you're going to go to one of your other hives and take a couple of frames, new frames, and pull out some brood, pull out two brood frames and shake off the bees and you're gonna give them brood right here in the middle. Right here in the middle. Two frames of brood minus the bees. Now, we go back to Miss Clippy over here, Queen Clippy, whatever, and you can either pinch her in this way. She just gotta sit there. I'm not, I'm not smashing it hard, she's just sitting there. Now you have two frames of brood, you've got the queen, you've got a little bit of honey in there, a little bit of pollen, you've got drones in the swarm. Now, now look here, now think, bees are instinctively sustainable. So if you give them all the pieces and parts that they need to be sustainable, why would they leave? See, they won't leave. Because you've given them a house, you've given them frames, you've given them two brood frames, they've got their queen, They've got wax in here, either drawn or can draw on foundation. They'll crawl right up the side of this bottom box down here. They'll crawl right up, and they'll go right up onto those brood frames, and you're done. You can even put another box over here because this sticks up. This sticks up just a smidge, so you can set a spacer lid, whatever. But my point is, without shaking them, you can manipulate bees, and don't be, don't ever be scared to catch the queen. You need to learn how to do that, and you don't got to be fast at it. You just got to be real slow and patient and catch the queen. Now, I can come back in about, oh, three or four days, smoke them. If she's not out of this cage or wiggled out, I can just simply open the cage. That's, that's their original queen, so there's no problem. 
Get her out. She'll go. She'll dive right down. Choop, right down in the dark. She loves the dark. So now I'm done with the queen cage, the queen clippy. I'm done with that. And now we have a whole box of bees, two box, two frames of brood. And I can separate this box and take it, I can plug it up and take it around the section and reset it to a new place. Or I can set it down where I am. I tend not to set it down where I am because other scout bees will come back and try to pull them back out of the house. I'm going to plug these bees up. You know what, what the front, wherever the, the hole's going to be taped, they're going to be plugged up for those three or four days. They're cool, they're fine. I'm not worried about that. If you want to add another box up top and give them a jar of sugar water, that's cool too. Bees are instinctively sustainable and you need to give them all the parts and pieces that they need to be happy in their home and I doubt very seriously they get up and leave. Don't shake them. Just don't shake them. And if you, if you, I could, now I could vacuum the bees out of that pot, but I really don't need to do that. I, I mean, unless I'm just going to move them a long distance. I don't need to do that. I just need to have a plan. And I think if you will do that, I think if you will be prepared to have a couple of extra boxes for your pots, you might find yourself doing this two or three times. It's just the combination of the texture of the pot, the darkness of the pot, they like them. And then what do you do? You can open up the pot, separate the lid from the mass of the bees. Now the queen's much easier to find. Be sure you spritz the bees really good, wet them down good with sugar water, maybe a little bit of a lemongrass oil in there or even vanilla in the sugar water. And the lid and barrel fit perfectly inside of a box. And if you give them some frames and a couple of frames of brood minus the other bees, they'll come right up there and take care of uh, that brood. And you can let that queen go in about three or four days. I'm telling you, you got to really put your old noggin to work if you're going to keep some swarms because they are smart as a whip. You're going to have to really put some thought to it. So I hope that, I hope it helps somebody. You can find these pots at manlake.com. You can just enter a swarm catch box or swarm catches or swarm pots and they'll come up. And they come with a packet. They come with a packet of swarm lure. I think they're 26 bucks, something like that. And we've got 10 of them. There we go. Ready to rock. Hope you have a good plan. You ought to be able to catch a lot of swarms. Have an awesome day.